<laughs> All right, we're finally back at Northdown. And, and not that we have a bad relationship, we're just, you're so busy and yeah, I'm so busy, yeah. but yeah. I'm slower to catching up, are you? Uh, not really, no. No, uh, <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter, because we're here for another Everything Wrong With. We've done Mercedes, yep. Cummins, yep. Cat, Don't GM. Forget the Coyote. Coyote, yeah, the coyote. That video did very well. That. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's all right. <laughs> but the one thing we haven't done is Dodge. Yes. So we got a Hemi? Yes, 5.7. It has 400 and 450,000. 490,000 kilometers on it. <laughs> okay. So we get to see what's running it. Actually, really good. Okay. We can't park. Okay, so we do these everything wrong with the videos, not because it's a terrible engine, but we want to see what the faults are. Obviously, this is a good engine. It's got 490,000 kilometers on it. So let's tear it apart and see what we get into. Okay. Here we go. discoloration synthetic <laughs> do i have to state that i like synthetic <laughs> keep in mind this is a 2004 it does have 490,000 of probably hard kilometers on it yeah but like i all these bolts were just garbage so hemis do suffer from the tick yeah the, the notorious uh, blown lifter yep that is the biggest problem with the Hemis. I've done a lot more newer engines. I associate the problem with more of the MDS system. Just like the GM, right? Yeah. The GM has the typical DOD system, displaced on demand or whatever, right? And the way it cuts off the oil to the lifter. Now I've seen lifters blown in the, in the GM stuff in the open position and the closed position. So, so closed position, just wouldn't work it wouldn't yeah it just and that's usually what blows out the can because it's sitting there bouncing around right right but when it's open the lifter will still open up the valve but give you a miss in the engine okay because so, it's told not to fire yeah with these ones the tick the tick is like normal but it's hard to distinguish between a normal small tick or the lifters on its way out yep. which will then bang on the camshaft so you've got you've got the the cam bouncing on the lifter yep. and then wiping out the cam yep. so then it's shaving through the oil and then it's a brand new engine yep. so so that that's hard to diagnose as to like okay well it's got a little tick well that's normal and then like a thousand kilometers yeah, later you gotta, gonna, you, gotta, yeah. you gotta destroy it's gotta the wait engine. it's gotta wait <laughs> <laughs> so these being in a lot of cop cars and that i've heard that because they idle so long it's not getting proper lubrication to the lifters and then that speeds up the the camshaft failing yeah. um but that's because they just sit there and idle all day yeah. but then they get the piss beat out of them when they're chasing somebody yeah. and that that helps again right but you said they've got good oil yeah. galleries they have large oil galleries from, like the research i've done in the past in my aera which is a, a engine rebuilders association which does alerts and stuff and they say because it's such an angle of the cylinders that the lifters are really sitting in there kind of flat so when we take the lifters out, you'll probably see that on the top of lifters, you'll see all the gallery markings on all, all the lifters. That's typically what I see when I take them apart. So they're saying, yeah, the oil is, drain, is draining back too fast on those parts. I really have to uh, give a shout out to mechanics, man, because I had the pleasure of working on one of these in the truck uh, a few months ago. Not a job I would not want to do. Bring it, strip, yeah, clean, yeah. drop, drop pressure wash. Like that. That's it. <laughs> we were doing a cam swap on it. It wasn't fun. I don't know how you do all the stuff that you do, man. They actually look like they're in really good condition. This one's a little wet compared to the others. Yep. Interesting to see how deep the valves go. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's got two different kinds of spark plugs. If you look at the tips, one, one's got like a small oh, yeah. electrode and the other one's got a yeah. big flat, every one, big of them? Flat one. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I heard if you don't use OEM, they're not happy. Ford says the same thing with the Coyote too. Yeah? yeah. MSD offers a kit and it's like 15 hertz right off the bat by using their dual spark plug uh, coilover. Okay. So there's lots of support for this stuff. So 
the hemi stands for hemispherical, which is a big dome in the cylinder head is able to do a different flame throw and add the it's two. It's more complete burn, I think it is. Yeah, and then the pistons are domed to make up for the compression, right? Yep. So the hemi's been around for a century. They've been in like old Fiat. So, like, so the concept isn't new, but Chrysler, started mainstreaming it in the 60s for NASCAR. And then as soon the as- 426, they, right? Yeah, 426, that's a legendary engine. The thing is that it worked so well that they NASCAR banned it because GM and Ford became so whiny. Second place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Win on Sunday, sell on Monday, right? Yeah. So NASCAR said you have to sell what you race. That's okay, the whole yeah. point, yep. right? So then they started selling more. I think they toned the compression down from 12 and a half or something to one down to 10 and a half for the street cars. Yep, yep. But then the Hemi took off and very desirable sought after muscle cars. Like we want to take this Hemi and put it in something, but anything old Mopar muscle cars are completely yeah, unobtainium Yeah, now. you can't find them. I just don't like their trucks. No, no, <laughs> Oh, come on, the Red Express? Well, the, the new Red ones, Express? Like anything that, that you can afford. Like every guy that drives a Cummins is like, yeah, they're like, what do you truck. drive? I drive a Cummins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You drive a Dodge? Yeah. They, they stopped making them. They, they had their Magnums and everything for a couple of decades. And then they introduced it back in 2003, right? So there was the 5.7 and then the 6.4 came out in the Challenger and the Charger in 2011. 2011. Yep. And then the 6.2 came out in 2015, I yep. think. That was the Hellcat. Just the Hellcat. Yep. So, there, and then I think Chrysler offered a whole pile of crate motors and, and you could buy it as a standalone Different before variants. it went into production. But yeah, this is for you guys if you're scrounging through a scrapyard and you kind of want to know what you're looking for. If you want a 6.4 and anything before um, 2014 yep. in the trucks, don't bother looking at it, right? So that being said, yeah, really good engines, capable of a lot. I think if we were to build, what would it take to get the Five seven up to like six seven hundred horsepower. Oh, this is a, basically a bolt on supercharger. Okay. In most cases, like I have standing on Holly or HP tuners, yeah. and away you go. Yeah. I can still see very f that that's crazy. I don't see any ring lines. No, it looks really good. Now, the only thing I do get a typical comment when I can see the crosshatch. It's always the first thing that people say to me all the time, right? Okay. But when you look at the cylinder, the crosshatch is just like a scratch in a chrome bumper. Just because you see it doesn't mean it's there. It's just embedded into it, right? Okay. So after a long time of the cylinder traveling up and down, it polishes it and makes it nice and shiny. Right. So right now you're seeing a shiny cylinder with the crosshatch embedded in behind it. Okay. But when you go to say like this, first one, so that's a sleeve that we installed. See how it's not shiny and you can see all of the crosshatch. Yep. So even when you deglaze the cylinder, that's why it gets rid of the shininess of it because the carbon and ring deposits and steel on steel will actually embed and stay inside the crosshatch. So that's why it's called deglazing because they start to glaze over and that's what you start to see. It doesn't mean it's going to leak oil and all that stuff. It's just, it's shiny. You don't want to see yourself in it. You don't want to see a reflection in it. I would usually do like the, the finger test or a flashlight. If yeah. I can put my finger in there, I can see my finger. I don't like that. Oh. So the crosshatch can still be there. You can still see it. That's no problem. So and if, you're, if sure your engine's I'll, giving you the finger, you're in trouble. Yes. And I'm sure a lot of people will give me grief about it, whatever. My most favorite thing is the three finger caliper own. I love watching videos on YouTube where the guys use those three finger caliper. It's the worst thing you can do to an engine. Yeah. But not to say that this wasn't running good. It just, when it leaves here or comes into a shop for a deglaze or whatever, it's not shiny. You can see the heavy crosshatch patterns in yeah. it. It's just like the theory of a scratch in a chrome bumper. You can see it, doesn't mean you can feel it. But that's when you start to get into the, the, the ends of like Nicosil and stuff like that. Yeah. Where Nicosil is very, very smooth. You can't even feel the crosshatch, but you can see the crosshatch in it but then that goes more with ring tension than it does with a cast iron cylinder, right? Okay. It's very different theories of, of engines. It looks great. Yeah, it looks great. I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by it. Well, yeah, 500,000 pounds. Crazy. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, I just really firmly believe that it comes down to maintenance and oil changes. Let's try the next one and see if I'm I am. You got vice grips? <laughs> Lifters are the issue, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a dead stop, man. 
Oh, there they go, yeah. Actually, like, look at that. The oil's still gold. But I see that wear mark that you're talking about. Is that? Yeah, it looks like a little half moon. Like yeah. So you, so you see in the lifters, you can see how they're, they're so horizontal in the engine. Right. They're so flat, right? But you can't change it. This is the manufacturing <laughs> you design. You can't change so it. So we put new lifters in. <laughs> And rebuild rebuild your engine and change the angle of your yeah. lifters. <laughs> so that's that's what I've seen that that because of the angle that they're on, the oil doesn't suspend around it properly. It drips off the bottom instead of drips off the top. Uh, so there are guys, there are kits where you can like uh, control the amount of oil that stays inside the gallery, so it does flood it more. There's a couple different modifications that you can do while the drag guys get into that kind of stuff, right? Right. Um, yeah, Hemi's whatever. are the choice for like funny cars and, and yep. whatever, right? Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, that, that really it, didn't want to come out. You pull out another one if I show you the exact same thing. Yep. Yeah, the wear, when the push rod's coming out like this, it's pushing down on the lift like that every time. And it's only seen a small little travel, and you can see how shiny it is on the top too, right? Yep. But, and yeah, that's, half moon you're well, you'll see that probably on every single lifter that comes out. It's like he knows he's done this before. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a, there's little things like that you can po point out on almost every engine, right? Right. Do you want to keep this? I can drill it and you can make it. <laughs> if I made it for you, would you wear it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, no, I will wear it on the next video. <laughs> okay. Now, would you reuse it? I would reuse it as a flower pot. Everything's a hammer except the screwdriver, that's a chisel. You'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Thor. Yeah. Oh, wait. I wasn't supposed to pop off that fast, so I was supposed to give you this one. Oh, that's not great. A little bit of sludge? A little bit of sludge. <laughs> they, they must have been running an inferior oil. Yeah. Good chunk. So that's good. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Thank you. you Thanks. So, only four bolts? An LS has six, but a Hemi only has four? I don't know. Seems I, sad. I'd have to actually see what the power difference are, what other people are getting. Yep. I've never had a, a 6.2 apart, like a Hellcat, so I don't know if we're four bolts. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure on that. But even a lot of the Fords, like not the coyotes, but some of the earlier Fords, they have just four like that two splayed from both sides. Yeah. But I still imagine you still be able to get lots of power out of these things. I'm sure. I just it's just not as good as six. Yep. <laughs> Number six, always the back one, far away. No. Yeah, it's we're always I yeah. shouldn't use impact on it, but we're putting new rods in it, right? Yep. <laughs> it's not much. Bro, oh, look at that. Yeah, Holy crap. Little, aluminum bearings. But look <laughs> at that. Yes, that's perfect. Check this out, Aaron. For 500,000. Is there chatter on it? or 500,000K, that's not bad. You almost got a brand new engine. <laughs> <laughs> using those. <laughs> so you can, Saving you can money everywhere. You can kind of see it, the line, the chatter all the way down, right? Yeah, yeah. But usually, typically, we don't usually have problems. With chatter? Until it's a problem. Right. They usually look really good, but then as soon as they start to heat up, the engines that I've personally seen in here, whenever they fail, the aluminum grabs. And it's, it, I don't know if it's whether between lack of oil, the wrong oil, fatigue of the aluminum. Yep. There's so many different things that could relate to it, right? Okay. So when you rebuild it, what kind of bearings do you use? I typically, in any, any application that I can get P-series bearings, which is the old standard, um, like Babbitt bearings, okay. I put them in. Most applications, I put high performance or tri-metal cleavite into it. ACL, they're all, that's usually where I put most of my stuff. Nice. So, Frank, looks just as good, right? Yep, looks mid. It's not as shiny. I can get, feel anything on that? You think I'll polish? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, as long as the rest of, so you can kind of almost see how there's like a little, it's gray, right? Yeah. Well, let's pull off. Uh, I'm gonna pop this one off. That's nice. Just... 
You need. You know what it is? It's the extension. <laughs> no, it can tell. Nobody can. Take it can you. tell the difference. Nobody can what? take you serious what? with your shitty it's tools. A... Oh, I had a reverse. Watch what? I had the wrong way. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Yes, you look at watch this. <laughs> What's worse, you having it in the wrong way or? <laughs> See, it knows. That's how specialized my tools are. Watch. Yes. That's amazing. That took off that 60 foot pound bolt. Stop making fun of my tools. <laughs> yeah. There's still some crush in it. Yeah, see, look at Nice. Are they, and they are standard, but right? But the crank is still uh... standard bearings. That's TG. See the crank? I've never seen a crank. I, I have, but it's just really discolored. Yeah. yeah. Usually when I pull them out, they're usually shiny. I bet you that LS is probably shiny, but mm -hmm. that would still polish up. Right? Okay. As long as I mic'd it up and it was all within reason. Even has a small chamfer around the oil gallery, I would increase the chamfer on the oil gallery. Yep. So in this, we'll probably end up using the crank for your builder. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah. We'll just chamfer the crank, polish it all up, throw a set of rods and pistons in it, and then you're rocking. Nice. If you want to check out Scott, uh, the real Northtown machine on Instagram, yep. um, also website. If you're interested in Scott building any of your engines or quoting, whatever, we've gone over some stats. Some all of that is on Google, and more than likely we got something wrong. So definitely comment down below as to what that is. If you've got experiences with uh, failures that we haven't mentioned, we definitely want to hear about that. And our word is not the Holy Grail or the Bible. No. It's we're trying to work off of our own experience and then um, build this into something cool. So um, definitely comment down below um, if you've got different experiences than us and comment down below if uh, what, ne what engine you're really interested in. We'll try to get our hands on it or if it comes through the shop, we'll, we'll definitely do that. So we're definitely gonna be building this one, um, probably six, 700 horsepower, somewhere around there, the way fuel is, maybe uh, 50 fuel? horsepower. Can we yeah. get it by that time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, tell us what you would want to see this put into as well. Um, Dodge is kind of uh, a tricky spot where um, all the cool stuff is just so expensive and then there's lots of mediocre stuff that they build. But The Magnum Wagon by Chrysler. <laughs> <laughs> that, it's like, but those are like the early 2000s yeah. and they're just so oh, they're bad. bad. They're okay. just so bad. Oh man, that'd be funny. <laughs> All right, get out there and work on it because uh, if you don't, nobody else is going to do it. If you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.